Booby Trap has no boobies and just one trap. Worst episode ever. Hello friends and welcome to another video from my series Quick Thoughts On, in which I always talk about different stories from the rich Star Trek universe. 30 years and 2 months ago, the next episode of Star Trek The Next Generation premiered. It was called Booby Trap and these are my honest opinions about it. This story has a strong A plot and a strong B plot. That is pretty unusual, in many of the episodes the B-plot is just filler, but in this case the B-plot is actually a bit more interesting than the main plot. It even starts with the B-plot and that is that Jordy can't get laid. What, a nerd who doesn't know how to get the woman he's interested in? That's so unrealistic. Come on. We start with a holodeck program in which he has a beach date with a woman called Christy and she wants to go home. If this was current year, he would call her a racist on Twitter and try to cancel her, but thankfully Jordy is a man, so he takes it as a man and decides to get a drink. The Enterprise is meanwhile in an asteroid field, which used to be Aurelius 9 and they receive a distress call. When they get closer, they find an abandoned ship, a Promelian battlecruiser. The show remembers that Picard is a historian and wants to beam there with Data and Worf. Even though the ship was destroyed thousands of Earth years ago, there still might be some danger. After arriving on the ship, they find that the crew died on their posts. Data then recovers the logs recorded by the captain and they beam back to the Enterprise, not knowing that their own ship has had some serious energy problems. Every time they do something using their energy, they suffer some energy loss. So when Picard orders the ship to leave, they can't go to warp because of more energy loss. Not only that, they are also being bombarded by lethal radiation and after their shields will fail after some serious energy loss, the radiation will kill them. So, because they can't leave, they can only wait until they die from radiation. Thanks Obama, I mean thanks Trump, I mean thanks Picard. Basically this all happened because Picard was curious. The moral of the story is never explore. Or maybe I'm still kind of drunk from the New Year celebrations. Anyway, Jordy has the order to find a way how to make them survive this till the next episode. And because this is actually a story about a nerdy guy who wants a girlfriend, he of course creates a holographic love interest. Jordy wants to find a way how to get inside of the engine and then finds a program simulating the drafting room 5 at Utopia Planitia. He also recreates the holographic image of Dr. Leah Brahms, and she's one of the creators of the warp engine which is on the finished Enterprise. I wonder why they called her Brahms. Is it because the holographic gypsy in the teaser played a violin version of Johannes Brahms' uh, Hungarian Dance number no. 5? Or is it just a pure coincidence? Anyway, she is very friendly with him, and I mean very friendly. In other words, it is suggested at the end of the episode that they fell in love. I'm not a huge fan of episodes in which humans fall in love with things like holograms or robots and so on. But in this episode it kind of works. The vast majority of the episode is just technobabble, so I'll skip most of the plot, but the main thing is that they find the solution. Or at least they think they found a solution. So basically the solution to the problem is to let the computer fly the ship out of the debris field, or at least they think so. The first simulation ends successfully, but when they try it again with the same inputs, the simulation ends up with the crew dying from radiation. So what do they do? 
Jordy suddenly decides to do something completely different, to let a human pilot deal with it. So, who will pilot the Enterprise out? Jordy himself, some professional pilot, Commander Riker, who, as we later find out, is the best pilot on the ship. No, it will be the captain. I'm not sure why is it the captain. I understand the symbolic meaning of it. I get that Picard wants to be uh, the one to blame if they die, but realistically, I think it's kind of dumb that the captain starts to pilot the ship itself. They, of course, are successful. They fly out uh, of the asteroid field, and Picard, the history and archaeology loving nerd, decides to blow up the ship so that nobody else will fall in the same trap. Huh. I'm pretty sure that we have established previously, or maybe later, that Starfleet officers usually use different methods how to warn other ships, like the Space Boys, I hope I said the word correctly, or they could use the tractor beam to pull the ship outside, or something like that. I don't really know, it just feels weird that somebody like Picard would give the order to blow up the ship, especially when he says in the beginning that the ship belongs to a museum. So, how does the real story end? Well, Jordi and Leah, or the holographic recreation of Leah, kiss, and she has a little romantic speech to him before he saves the program, and it will be pretty embarrassing when he meets the real Dr. Leah Brahms in the episode Galaxy's Child in season 4. This episode has deserved a special place in Star Trek history. Unless my memory is wrong, this is the first Star Trek episode directed by a woman, Gabrielle Beaumont, or however should I say her name. Do I care that she is a woman? Of course not. So why am I mentioning it? Because I am preparing myself for the premiere of the new Picard show, and I find everywhere articles celebrating the fact that Hanel Culpepper, again, I hope I said her name correctly, is the first woman who directs the Picard premiere episode. Star Trek had female directors since the 80s. I think it's sad that modern media forgets women like Gabrielle. Her episodes have usually pretty good character moments, and this one is not different. The emotional scenes with Jordi are the best parts of this episode. To be perfectly honest, uh, the Jordi scenes are the only scenes uh, in this episode in which I actually care about what is going on. I don't really care about the main plot. The only positive thing I can say about uh, the main part of the plot is that the visual effects look absolutely beautiful. I don't know why, but I really love the beautiful model footage, and at the same time I don't really care about the modern CGI effects from shows like Discovery. There is simply some magic which got lost when they switched to CGI, and in HD it looks more beautiful than ever. On my standard scale from 0 to 10, where 0 is complete garbage, 10 is a masterpiece, and 5 is just average, I would give this episode 6 out of 10. The B-plot is the only thing I really care about, but as always, these were just my opinions, let me know what did you think about this episode, did you love it, hate it, or do you agree with my slightly better than average rating? Leave your opinion down in the comment section, if you enjoyed this video please hit that thumbs up button, and if you have some free time you can watch any of the videos on my channel. You should see some links on screen right now. Thank you very much for watching and see you very soon, hopefully when I'll be able to talk with a normal voice. Thanks and bye.